Morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you for taking time to come on and listen to us today and learning more about DeFi and I guess the evolution of how the financial landscape is, is growing and how DeFi is revolutionizing, uh, revolutionizing the world of finance as we know it. So DeFi or decentralized finance has become a beacon in transform transformative journey, a concept that many of you have encountered as a peripheral buzzword. But honestly, I can assure you that what's happening in the DeFi world is a seismic shift in the financial world. It's really changing the whole landscape and evolving everything that we know in finance. Just a bit of background, um, I, I came from traditional finance. I was an investment advisor at a bank for about eight years. Um, so I, I'm very well aware of, of how the TradFi world works and I went over to cryptocurrency in about 2015 and that really opened up my eyes to what was actually possible. Um, but back then, what we saw in the cryptocurrency space was, uh, was still very nascent, right? So if you looked at DeFi back in the old days, you looked at the DEXs in the old days, it was basically static order books, there was nothing going on, there was not much innovation at that point in time. Things have changed significantly since then, right? Financial institutions have started to adopt blockchain and tried to include it into their existing infrastructure. Currently in the, in the financial world, um, there, there are two different types of mindsets right? in the way that people have developed the infrastructures. One is private blockchains, which Julian had previously talked talk slightly about. This has um, been the main focus of a lot of financial institutions across the world, purely because of the way that they are constructed and the centralized way that um, that infrastructure applies to the existing banking infrastructure as well. Unfortunately, as, as innovative as... Um, blockchain is, having a private blockchain at the end of the day does not relate to the ethos of decentralized finance. And I'm going to explain a little bit more about why, why that makes a difference in decentralized finance and uh, by using public chains and uh, private chains. So let me move on to what most of the world is trying to figure out right now, which is permission blockchains. All right? Permission blockchains are a bit of a cross-section between the private and the, the public blockchain world. Why, why is that important? Why, why is public blockchain access important to DeFi? One of the main things is global accessibility. In the current um, environment in finance, most banks are siloed within their own worlds. They don't share the information. They don't share the liquidity of each other. Clients are important to each bank, right? I mean, when I was a banker, we don't want to share AUM with any other person. We want to keep the fees to ourselves, and that, that was just the way things were done in the, in the banks in TradFi. Opening up your platform using public blockchains or permission public blockchains allow you to get access to all public investors across the world. And that, that is important in the current environment because liquidity has been so tight across all industries. I don't think it's just um, in, in the blockchain space itself, but across real estate, cap rates are high, there's no liquidity. So opening, your asset, uh, opening up your platforms and infrastructure up to a public access is extremely important, I think, in the decentralized finance world. The second thing is financial inclusion. If you, if you look across the, most of the world, most of the third world countries right now are all unbanked. They don't have access to any banking facilities. They're not able to invest in any type of um, public assets or even in any, any sort of investment asset classes. What cryptocurrency had shown us is that even the unbanked in places like Nigeria, in Philippines, in Africa, they're all able to access cryptocurrency now. And a large reason for that as well is, is because of uh, the, the way that the third world countries are and the inflation that a lot of uh, the currencies in these third world countries have as well. Cryptocurrency opened up all of that for us, right? And now what we're looking at in the STO space is trying to revolutionize that and take that global inclusion, the financial inclusion from all these other places and bring them into the STO world in a more regulated permission blockchain environment. The third thing is enhanced liquidity. In traditional finance, markets operate within certain constraints and certain timings, right? Most markets operate from a nine to five period. Whereas if you look into the STO world, the cryptocurrency world, it's a 24 seven market. It's a perpetual market that is always open, is always tradable. This is a large, this is a massive factor as an asset manager, an investment manager, being able to 
buy and sell positions at any point in time, even when the market is closed. I, I know that currently it is still accessible by certain investment banks and off-market hours, but liquidity in those periods of time is also not great. So having a 24-7 market as an investment advisor changes the landscape significantly. The last thing I would say about the DeFi world is fractional ownership. This is extremely important in what, what I was mentioning before and a lot of these other third world countries as well. Traditionally, private equity, private debt, real estate, all these were mainly only accessible to the affluent, your private banking clients, your ultra high net worth clients, institutional investors. DeFi, fractionalization, offers anyone in the world, right, with an internet connection to access these investments. And I, I think democratizing finance, uh, de democratizing all these investments is a massive push for DeFi right now. So, we at iXwap believe that a lot of the assets, that a lot of private market assets in, this, in the world right now are meant to, be, to live on decentralized exchanges like iXwap. I mean, if you think about the type of private market assets that we, we focus on, it's private debt, private equity, collectibles. You know, we even have um, a fractionalized Ferrari on the platform. A lot of these asset owners would think that they belong on centralized exchanges. But the truth of the matter is, they don't, right? You want to be on a centralized exchange, you generally need a market maker to market make your asset. If not, you end up having static order books, which look like OTC markets, which honestly doesn't change anything from what it was 10 years ago and what it is now. So therefore, we believe a lot of these assets that we see in the market right now actually belong on de decentralized exchanges and we, with automated market makers. And this is not just a theoretical sort of assumption. Back in old days, if you, you were trading, back in 2015, 2016, if you were trading cryptocurrency on any of these DEXs, there was really nothing going on because there was not much DeFi innovation at that point in time. There's a company called Uniswap that had developed the automated market maker. And what we had seen was a reflection of the technology and the inclusion of liquidity across the world, right? The, the, the volumes and the liquidity on the exchange went up 1,100 uh, 1, X, which is insane, right? You don't see that in traditional markets and you don't see, see this, this kind of innovation happening. So that leads us to iXwap. We've designed a permission DeFi ecosystem for any, anyone of an asset, anyone that has two sides of an asset. The base currency and the asset itself to market make themselves and create liquidity pools on the platform. Anyone that can pass our KYC and compliance is able to access the platform and to trade any of these assets. In the traditional world, market makers will provide liquidity on both sides, right? So you have to have two sides of the equation. You have to have the, the asset and the base currency to provide markets, to provide bid offers in the market. What the innovation of Uniswap did was that they allowed anyone with an asset to become that market maker and participate in all these liquidity pools and earn those fees that the market makers used to earn. So what we've done differently from Uniswap is that we've created an ecosystem that allows you to customize your asset. So if you hold in a security token, you come to us and you'll deposit it with our custodian. What happens after that is that we mint a wrapper token, an ERC-20 token that is used in our whole ecosystem to trade and to swap and to invest into um, any, anything on the platform. This, this is actually quite an important step why, why we actually did that. Across the world, a lot of security token platforms like us have created our own smart contracts for issuing security tokens. All of us have our own mindsets of what is actually the right way to develop the smart contracts. Might be, no one, I, I don't think anyone is right so far, right? And no one is wrong either. The main thing is the standardization of all these, these token contracts, which I feel that has been a bottleneck in the whole crypto, uh, in the security token markets right now. So by standardizing all these assets, creating ERC-20 tokens, we allow the trade tradeability and liquidity across our, all our ecosystems. Another important factor here is that we have started linking ourselves up with different broker dealers across the world and token issuers. Something that, um, when the, when the security token market first started, there were a lot of token issuers across the world. 
but people were issuing tokens to nowhere. There was no trading, there was nothing going on. There were OTC boards you know, that had no secondary liquidity. So what we started to do is that we started to link up using our technology to link up with token issuers across the world to provide secondary liquidity for all the assets on the platform as well. So other than the AMMs or the automated market makers and the decentralized exchange that we have created, we have just launched a primary issuance platform that is very similar to what the IDEO uh, initial decentralized offering platforms had done in the cryptocurrency space. Converse to, I guess, a centralized race, what we've done is that we've provided access for anyone that can pass our due diligence process and compliance processes to issue a token on our platform. We've created a necessary infrastructure for them to produce the smart contracts, legal contracts, and it takes maybe about half an hour from start to end to issue a token on our platform. Obviously, the raise is, is, uh, is up to the individual investors on the platform, whether they think that your product is worth investing to at the end of the day. But what we have created is the infrastructure for anyone to come and raise, raise funds on a platform legally. And, and a large reason why we had actually done this is that if you look at the whole cryptocurrency space and you look at the type of assets that were being issued, ICOs, NFTs, all this was actually basically company funding at the end of the day, um, just in different forms. So we, we embarked on this journey to, to actually build all this out and to actually work with other platforms as well to issue security tokens on-chain, uh, completely on-chain. So if you look at the right of the diagram, what we've actually done is that we have tried not to be, um, I guess, we, we've tried not to silo ourselves and work on this whole industry by ourselves. We've created API connections. We've connected, connected to connect to other platforms so that they can issue our assets and we can issue their assets as well. We don't want to be... The, the, the platform that just issues assets. We want to bring the whole world of security tokens together because that's the only way that things are going to move forward. I think that a lot of people in the world right now are too siloed and we need to work together to push the security token industry forward. So I'm going to end my presentation here and just show you a short video of how our launchpad works. So, as, as my partner mentioned just now, we just signed our first MOU with a Korean entertainment group called Funderful. They are going to be using the launchpad to launch the first Korean IP assets outside of Korea onto a on, fully on-chain system. If any of you guys have any other questions, uh, we'll be outside, our booth's outside, and if you want to launch any assets of us, please approach us. We'll be happy to look at anything that you guys um, want to launch on our platform or want to have a chat about. Thanks, everyone.